What's up, guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If it sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today, we're looking at the Balkin 10 year old straight from the cask. Stick around. So we are looking at a Balkin today. We've got one from the Straight from the Cask series. Um, straight from the Cask, as the name suggests, means these are single cask offerings. They come in a cask strength, and they're usually released in pretty small batches. Usually less than a thousand bottles are made. And they're generally pretty well received. The one I've got today is, of course, peated because Balkin is the peated line from the Edradour Distillery. And this one's been matured exclusively in an Oloroso sherry cask. Of course, I do like my sherried whiskeys, and I also like my peated whiskeys, and that peat sherry combo is always something I've had a soft spot for. Now, of course, peat and sherry are both very powerful flavors, and they do have to agree. Sometimes they don't, and the flavors can kind of pull in different directions, but when they get it right, the whiskey can be amazing. Now, this is a bottle that I picked up after I reviewed the Balkan 10 about a month or two ago, and honestly speaking, I didn't really like the 10-year-old. It had a certain funk to it that I didn't feel matched the peat, because Edradour, it's famous for its densely sherried whiskeys, but it's also well known for having a certain funk to it. So yeah, the 10 didn't really work out for me, and that was my first experience with Balkan, but I didn't want to give up on them, I didn't want to write them off, and I thought I might have a better chance at enjoying something like this. This one's sherried, it's single cask, it's cast strength, and I figured it might be a little bit more interesting to me. It was a risk, of course nothing in life is a guarantee, but I did know that more exploration was needed from this brand, so let's hope this one works out a little bit better than the 10 year old did. And with all that said, let's jump into our review, see what our whiskey is all about, and in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. So single cask offerings don't usually disappoint, and Edra Dower doesn't usually disappoint, so our specs here are just fine. We have an ABV of 59.1%, and of course, it's going to be non-chill filtered and natural color. So we have a beautiful natural color here. As far as the bottle goes, in general, I'm not a huge fan of Edradour bottlings. I do like their cast strength Ibisco Decanter series, but their standard line and their straight from the cask labels aren't great as far as I'm concerned. So bottle presentation here is going to be two and a half out of five. We have a 500 ml bottle here. I do wish it was full size. I guess we could lose the elaborate box. Um, I kind of like the box. I think they're kind of cool. But I reviewed the Edra Dower straight from the cast not too long ago and I had a funny comment underneath. Somebody said it looked like a homemade bird box and I can't unsee that now. Um, but yeah, for our bottle, distillation date, bottling date, cast number. We have great info here. The bottle is meh. I did not add water. Let's try our nose. Wow. Okay, right away. Very big, very sweet sherry. Yeah, so this is really sweet sherry. Um, you know, it's an Oloroso cask, but if I didn't know any better, I might guess this is a PX cask. Uh, we also have a certain, like, farminess to it. I'm getting, like, hay earth, grass, and manure. We also have cherry pie, we have candied strawberries, we have sweet red berries in general, and a very earthy peat. Interesting nose. And now our palate. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. Again, very farmy. I'm getting earth and manure and hay and grass and oak. Uh, again, cherry pie, more of those sweet berries. We have some dark chocolate, we have some red chili, we have some smoked bacon, smoked ham. We have like grilled meat in hickory barbecue sauce. I love this. And now our finish. Okay, um, I'm getting ham smoked over hickory wood, honey mustard, barbecue sauce, like hickory barbecue sauce, um, more of that dark chocolate, more of those red chilies. Basically, this feels like a continuation of the palate, and that's not a complaint. Um, 
Our finish is pretty long. It's big, it's sweet, it's vibrant. So I'm not gonna keep you in suspense. I think this one's a banger. I think it's delicious. It's enough to redeem the Balkan line in my mind after being disappointed by the 10 year old. And it makes me want to explore the brand or the line even further just to see what else they're capable of. I think that our cask worked wonders here. Edredour is famous for its like super powered sherry casks. Although this one does hit a little bit different from the 10 year old, the 12 year old Caledonia or the Edredour straight from the cask that I tried. Um, the cask in this one is extremely active and it is extremely sweet, but it doesn't have that density. It doesn't have that sort of like concentration that some of the other ones did. I always describe Edra Dower uh, sherried whiskey as like sherried concentrate. So it's not quite as dense, but it is sweet. In fact, it's particularly sweet. So that's something to note if you're especially like sensitive to sweetness. Uh, I know there's a lot of people out there who don't like stuff like PX casks. And while this one is an Oloroso cast matured whiskey, it does kind of hit like a PX matured whiskey. I think it works. I'm okay with that sweetness, but it's not going to be for everyone. Luckily, we do have some flavors in here that kind of counterbalance that sweetness. First off, we have the peat. And the peat in this kind of gives us like a barbecue or hickory smoked bacon vibe. And of course, who's not going to like that? And then we have that farmy element. And you know, it's funny, the funk that I usually get from Edra Dower comes off a little bit different in this one. For example, if you look at the 12 year old Caledonia, I always get kind of like a lactic or milky note from that. And that sounds really off-putting, but it's actually beautiful. It's a beautiful note. It adds a beautiful layer to the whiskey, but I get less of that in here. Instead, I get kind of like these farmyard, barnyard, earthy, manure type notes, which again, sounds really weird. It sounds really off-putting, but it does work beautifully. Um, what else do we have in here? Well, we have the, the, the cherry notes, the sweet red berry notes, which I guess are one and the same with the sherry cask influence that I mentioned earlier. But yeah, all of this comes together beautifully. Um, so yeah, this is an interesting whiskey. It's unique. It's vibrant. So yeah, this one's a great peat and sherry combo. And I love peat and sherry combos. I don't need a lot of them in my rotation, but I do like having a few around. And I don't mean like Ben Romick or Springbank level peat. I mean big boy level peat. And this one delivers on that. It scratches that itch and it does it very well. In fact, I had this one in a side-by-side -side not long ago with one of my favorite peach sherry heavy hitters, the Kilhoman Loch Gorm. And between the two, this one was the clear winner. Now that's kind of not very fair because this one is a single cask, it's cast strength, but still, it's a beautiful whiskey. I absolutely love it. I'm gonna score this one a 90. So we've got great flavors in here. It doesn't feel too big considering the high ABV and it's a really unique whiskey. So I think this is going to suit anyone who's signing up for a cast strength, heavily peated, heavily sherried whiskey. Like when you sign the contract, when you buy a bottle like this, this is the kind of whiskey you want in your glass. And anyone who knows Edward Dower knows what they can do with the sherry cask. On top of that, we can factor in the very distinctive house style and we end up with a very good whiskey, one that's easy to recommend. So check it out. So value for this one is a little bit tricky. Uh, it comes in a 500 milliliter bottle size and it's not cheap. Now, do I think it's worth it? Yes, I love the whiskey. It's not gonna be for everyone. You do need to be ready for big peat, big sherry, and again, that very distinctive farmy quality. So it's not an easy whiskey. It's not gonna be for everyone, but if my description sounds good to you, absolutely check it out. You'll probably find it worth the money. Okay, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you wanna help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That's always appreciated, and I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Balkan 10-year-old straight from the cask? What were your thoughts? And finally, down in the comments below, you can let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.